The next thing we're going to talk about is the developer experience, and I would like to introduce Dave Cardella to walk us through that. Dave? Thanks, Jim. Appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. Most custom applications are built that, to, to access services directly. This means the code is written to get at rendering and symbology information, pop-ups, as well as any other capabilities that are exposed through the service. This means quite a bit of development in some cases. All of our APIs embrace the web GIS pattern. This means that the web map and the web scene are the central component of all of our APIs. Our applications use this pattern, and I'm encouraging you to do the same, because you're going to recognize a lot of advantages in doing so. You'll write less code. Instead of writing code to access all of the information in the service, you just use a map. And in a couple lines of code, all that information is available to you at your fingertips. You can empower your end users to configure the, your application simply by editing or authoring their own web maps. You can leverage your authoritative content and all of the permissions and user roles you've established when using web maps. Using the map allows data to flow seamlessly, not only between your applications, but between your applications and the rest of the ArcGIS platform. Using the technology that you've seen here this morning and that you're going to see for the rest of the morning is more than just using an API. It's about a good SDK. It's about providing a great developer experience. And that developer experience is, is felt through the developer website. Here we've got a newly designed landing page for our developer website. And when folks first come to the site, they typically have two questions. The first question is, what can your technology do for me? And the second question is, how do I get started? Well, to help answer the first question, we've completely redesigned all of the feature pages. So here we're looking at the routings and directions feature page. We talk about how to use our service. We also provide live samples. So, Yes, of course we can generate optimal routes and directions, but because we're sitting on the ArcGIS platform, we can do much more, like this sample here that calculates drive times. I mentioned this is a live sample, so we can interact and change some of the inputs. Let's change the drive area to walk area. We can also route to the closest facility. So here we're dropping random points, figuring out which one is closest to me, and then providing the optimal route to that. Many of your apps need to perform analysis so that you can get greater insight into your data. The analysis features page does just that. We've got live samples that show how to aggregate and normalize your data. I like this one, being able to intersect and extract data. So here I've got my extraction window. I can simply drag it around over the data that I'm interested in and take it with me. All of the live examples you see here today, we link out to the SDK resource so that you can learn how these particular samples were built and get the code. I like this one. This one's using hotspot analysis to determine and look at patterns within our data. And of course, geometry operations. Here, we're simply buffering a hurricane and then doing a simple intersect to determine where it hit landfall. That helps answer what our technology can do. But we have another resource that does that as well, and we do that through your voice. We call them success stories. Here's one called Saturday in the Park. It allows city planners to locate neighborhoods that might be underserved by parks within their jurisdiction. Each success story has a number of screenshots and, of course, a full description on what the problem is and how this application solves that problem. All of our success stories are categorized by industry. Let's go into public safety. I really like this one. This is one of our newer success stories. It's Command X. It allows tactical teams to make smart decisions during emergencies. The reason why I really like this 
is because this app and its companion apps use web maps, and they also leverage ArcGIS identity. So it's a great example of leveraging the WebGIS pattern. Here's another interesting one. This application helps to predict the formation of black ice on roads. But you're developers. This is great to read about success stories and, and the problems that they solve, but you want to know how these success stories were implemented. We take success stories one step further. This particular one was implemented using the JavaScript API, and heavy, heavy use of pop-ups is also implemented. We link out to the documentation and the SDK resource and the code so that you can get your hands on it and start developing something similar to, yourself, similar to this uh, solution right here. Well, that's great. So you found out what our technology can do for you. The next question we typically get is, how do I get started? And that's easy. Take a couple minutes and sign up for the developer program. Once you join the program, you get a lot of good things. You get credits for testing and building your application. You get access to a large, vibrant GIS developer community that you can collaborate with. You get the conceptual, the API, and all that reference help with a ton of samples. And of course, you get the native API, or you get our client APIs, which does include our native runtime SDKs, our JavaScript API, as well as our Python API. So you've signed up for the program. Now you want to get started in development. We've got two really good resources for that, ArcGIS Dev Labs and Example Apps. First, the Dev Labs. The Dev Labs follow the uh, data, design, and develop paradigm. Data Dev Labs are all about getting your information and preparing it to be published through the platform. Design is about how your uh, map looks, the rendering, but not just that. It's also about the user experience. What happens when a user interacts with your map? How is that pop-up going to look? So it's about designing pop-ups as well. And of course, the development, uh, the developed dev labs take you through very succinct uh, capabilities, and they have uh, a few steps to get you up and running. This particular one uh, talks about displaying a web map. It's 10 minutes long. No dev lab is longer than 15 minutes, so you can get to zero and zero to hero in a very short period of time. At any time, you can go over and view the solution live. So the dev labs we first launched uh, last year, we had a handful of them. Since last year, we now have over 100 dev labs. Now, having that many dev labs can make it a little difficult to navigate. If you ask me, that's kind of a good problem to have. But in order to solve that problem, we allow you to browse the labs. You can filter the lab based on topic or capability, or the API that you're using, or filter out and look at all the new labs we've added. So you see here that there are a number of them. So that's Dev Labs. Another great way to get started is through our example apps. Our example apps are fully-fledged applications where we provide the source code to you on GitHub, and they have two main advantages. One is that they illustrate how to use our technology in a best practices scenario. And the second one is that they give your app development a kickstart. Use the capabilities you like, throw away the capabilities that you don't, and implement the ones that you want. Each example app has extensive documentation. It's a tutorial-like documentation. We take you through chunks of the code. We talk about what the code means and what's going on behind the scenes so that you can completely understand what's going on in these apps. So those are just a few of the improvements we've made to the developer experience. But go ahead, go to the website, check it out, take some time, and I think you'll agree with me in that we provide a complete mapping, location, and analytics platform. Thank you.